Hi, everyone. This is Freddie Martinez, and we are going to continue our lesson about muscle parts and the motor mechanisms. So last time we were talking about the actin filaments, which are also called the thin filaments, and how calcium ions play a role in binding and exposing the myosin binding sites. If you feel a need to go back and look at the prior video, please go ahead and do so so you can refresh your memory. Otherwise, let's continue. So here's some vocabulary terms that we went over last time. Go ahead and look over them. These vocabulary terms will come up again during this lesson. The myosin filament or thick filament are also composed of proteins. As we mentioned before, the actin filaments are also composed of various proteins with different functions, while the myosin are also composed of protein. As you can see here, we have on the right side a visual representation of what the thick filament looks like. And as you can see, it's composed of various bundles. Here on the left side, we have one bundle of myosin protein. You can see that the bundle has multiple heads on it, and those are the ones that bind to the myosin binding site on the actin filament. Here on the left side, we have a low energy configuration myosin. The ATP binds to the myosin while it is in low energy configuration. The myosin then hydrolyzes the ATP and makes it lose one phosphate, making it become an ADP molecule. It is at this point that the myosin becomes a high energy configuration. Remember that when the ATP breaks off a phosphate, it is releasing energy, and that is why this myosin is in the high energy configuration. While the myosin is bound to the ADP, it is able to bind to the myosin binding site on the actin, which, as we mentioned in the previous lesson, is exposed due to the calcium bind binding to the troponin complex. While the myosin is bound to the actin, it then releases the ADP, causing it to change shape or orientation from high energy configuration to low energy configuration. This shift from the first shape to the second shape causes the actin to slide over. The myosin remains bound to the actin until an ATP molecule finds its way to the myosin and binds to it. This allows the myosin to release the actin. It remains in low energy configuration and is ready to repeat the cycle again. Here we have an illustration of the full cycle. On the left side, we have the myosin bound to the ATP. The ATP is hydrolyzed, forming ADP with one phosphate. Once the phosphate is broken off, the myosin binds to the actin at the myosin binding site. Once bound, it loses the ADP and the myosin returns to low energy configuration, taking the actin along with it. The myosin remains bound to the actin until the ATP binds to it, releasing the actin and repeating the cycle over again. Please be aware that the ATP that attaches to the myosin is a new molecule and not the molecule that was used before in the previous cycle. Here's a visual representation of the actin and the myosin. The actin or the thin filament are represented by this thin blue line, and the thick or the, the thick filaments are the myosin are represented by the thick red lines. When the myosin binds to the actin and then 
releases the ADP and shifts over, it causes the muscles to contract. That brings us to the end of part four. If you have any questions, post them on the classroom website or bring them into the discussion in class tomorrow. Feel free to rewatch the video as many times as you need and be sure to look for any assignments that I may be posting. Thank you for watching.